you know? So you can come, you know, the understanding of getting enough movement through all of the fascia in the body. And for example, um, I forget who the Quebec their hockey team is. Anyways, they've been really working on increasing their range of motion and doing a lot of fascia work. And they used to have the most injuries. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know which team I'm talking about. I think it's hockey. Um, that uh, they had, yeah, they had the most injuries. And they started doing a lot of eccentric stretching and eccentric fighting is that. It's anything that is the it's the lengthening part as opposed to the contraction shortening part. And that reduced their injuries. Now they had no injuries. So they went from highest injury rate to no injuries in the last season. So fascia, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear a lot about your fascia in the future. And uh, fascia is just like the saran wrap over your tissue. But the challenge with the us is we tend to make it more like shrink wrap. It gets really, really tight. So this is my new favorite, favorite torture, and that is to take the uh, roundup towel. So this is about the thickness of a, um, you know, an exercise roller, but you don't want to use that because that will kill you. So you take it right underneath your calves, and you come and you sit back. So I know we've done this once before, but I don't think Tony, I don't think you were here. So ooh. now you're, I'm getting the bottom of the calves, which is also great because that's getting into the Achilles. All that insertion goes along there. And um, you can do just a little press from side to side. And I often use a beach towel, which I just happen to take it to the beach so it's not here. And it's thicker, and this is a softer, cushier uh, blanket. So it's quite easy. But this is a really nice uh, massage in through the calf. And remember, the calf is made up of a different type of muscle. It's made for stamina, totally different type of muscle fibers. And it works every time you're standing, but it just holds you. It doesn't contract like walking. So calves get really tight, and then that goes into the hamstrings, you might have noticed. So this is a really great stretch to do to help in through that area. And then if you can lean back, that's brilliant too. And you're also getting a good stretch in through the shins. And then if you can lean back with fingertips or palms, and then you press and you lift through the rib cage. So your shoulders are coming forward and you're getting the rise of the rib cage. It's kind of a big boob one. Um, you're really lifting right from here. So you kept the opening through the rib cage and then you can draw right back up and just come on into your nice tall spine. So you feel that uh, lift in the rib cage here. And then come on and take the roller down or the blanket down. So you're just before the ankle bone so that you're gonna get a little bit at the very bottom of the calf, very, very bottom of the Achilles and gently stretching in there. So Achilles is one of the tightest areas in the body, very thick, very strong. And I'm absolutely convinced that if you keep that area really malleable, you may never have ever any Achilles problems. And you'll be able to go cross-country skiing, rollerblading, all those things that really uses your ankles. And that's kind of nice because then, you know, you go for a long hike on the Bruce Trail and you don't have any tension. And now just take that blanket out. Ooh, I think it's going to feel like you just took your skates off because it's kind of a nice cushy feeling after. Okay, so now you can come right down onto your backs. And the other thing I wanted to say about hiking in the Bruce Trail is, not that you asked, is that one time I was hiking all day, and it was up in Huntsville, and it was in December, and there was a ton of snow, but it was quite warm. Yet my feet would freeze all the time, even though I had great boots, and I just get really cold feet. And so my friend said, well, why don't you do a on yoga pose? And I was like, hmm. So I did shoulder stand. Now I know how crazy that sounds, but I, I just cleared the snow, took my bum in the air, went into shoulder stand, and I did it for, I don't know, maybe a minute. And then I came back down and we hiked for hours. It was crazy. I had circulation for hours. I never would have believed it. So whenever you do anything that, uh, um, to help the body with circulation, like, doing that, which is taking the blood from the feet down and then it pumps back up. 
You could change a walk, you could go longer. So yoga is a medicine that you can use to help everything else, balance, digestion, sleep. And I'm going to introduce some wonderful poses for sleep tonight. And uh, so let's begin. Begin by becoming very still. Feeling that how the whole back of the body is releasing into the floor. Now just feel the awareness of the whole body being supported. The front body opens. Take your shoulder blades back. And as you stay aware of your body, notice any areas that are catching your attention. Maybe they're a little tighter, or maybe they're feeling like they're getting softer. And with the palms just rolled up to the ceiling and the fingers naturally curled, feel the entire back of the arms released into the floor. Now do any little wriggling, wiggling you need to do to get more in contact with the floor. I love to draw the shoulder blades down. And another thing I do, I'll attempt to explain it is, I'll do a breath in and then I'll crunch my ribs back. Like I'll pull them back so the abdominal wall pulls back. And that is like a way of pushing down a sandwich bread. And you push down the front body and I'll feel like the back crack and areas release. So do just a strong exhale, pull the abdominal wall in and feel the back of the body contact you to the floor more. Now then to gently let your head roll from side to side. Couple more breaths as you do. Just feeling really wonderful. And then you can gently let everything go. Release. And as you lay in Shavasana, as you let more and more of your body go. Then take the knees and bend them and take the feet right to the top of the bolster. And you can have your knees and feet just to hip width apart. Now then just take the soles of the feet together and let the knees flay apart just like butterfly wings. And let the outsides of the calves be supported by the bolster. Let yourself go. And then just notice if once again, we can feel softer anywhere. Even if it's to relax the muscles in the eyes. and tune into the harmony that is inside the body. There is an invisible harmony going on that is circulating your blood, beating the heart, pressing the blood through the veins, and there's drainage going on in different areas as you slow down. So feel like a wonderful observer of this intelligence that is moving through your body and taking care of everything for you. And that the more you relax, the better it works. We have the luxury of living in the most efficient 
the most efficient um, system in the world, the body. And the more we relax, the more we support its efficiency. So completely let go. And take the feet over the bolster again, backs of the knees supported. Letting go. Feel the backs of the arms heavy. And on your next in-breath, we'll stretch through the upper back in between the shoulder blades. Take the hands to the ceiling, interlace the fingers, and then pull the shoulder blades off the floor and reach the, heat, the wrist to the ceiling and take a deep breath into the upper back. And then exhale over to the left. Get a wonderful reach, drawing that right shoulder blade well off the floor. Breathing is constant, in and out through the nose. And then you can breathe in and draw back up and exhale over to the right, bending that right elbow. Draw the arm across as you breathe steadily. And then you can breathe in and come back up. And one more time, exhale lower to the left. Take deep breaths. And as always, if you find a great spot, stay. If you want to stay on one side longer, please do catch up later. That goes for every part of the class. Anytime you find a brilliant pose, just stay there and breathe. And then breathing in on the next one, inhale, and then exhale over to the other side. Again, nice full breaths. Great. And then we can breathe in. And now taking the left hand, pull the top of the hand down. So you're hooking the fingers down and stretch the top of the wrist to the ceiling. Pull down to the pain point if it's okay. So you can really stretch the fascia in the top of the palm. And then pull back. The fingers a little bit spread. Press the heel of the hand to the ceiling. Take a deep breath. Pushing away. Breathing. And then you can shake out that hand, let the right hand drop. Shake, 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 shake a little faster. And Larkin might really like this one if she's still there. And then you can come right into a hand circle, right around, and other direction. Now pull the hand back and then point it down and back. It goes fast as you can. Increase the blood flow to the forearm. That's what this movement does. And then spread fingers, point, uh, point, sorry, spread the fingers and then squeeze, make a fist really, really fast. Really fast. Really fast, fast as you can. You're gonna fatigue the top hand and then shake out again. Breath, shake, shake. And stop and drop. And we'll let that arm go. And feel the difference in the two arms, forearms, and hands. You might go for a moment and appreciate that increased energy and blood flow. Letting go. And then you can take that right hand up in the air and pull the wrist down. Send the top of the wrist to the ceiling. Stay with the breathing. And then pull the fingers back just a little bit of a strand. Send the heel of the hand to the ceiling, really push it off. Excellent. And then you can take the hand around, really pull down and back and really back. Stay with your breathing. Good. 
and then the other direction. Excellent, shake out, really, really, really shake. Good, and then bend down, pull back, bend down, pull back, bend down, pull back, pull back, bend down, pull back, keep that going. Excellent, and then spread the fingers and squeeze fast and hard. Spread, 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 spread and squeeze. Breathing, breath, breath. Okay, shake out the hand again. Floppy, 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 really fast and vigorous, fast, fast. And then we're never drop. And completely let go. Feel the body release into the floor. Now take the arms behind the head and interlace the fingers. We'll take an in-breath and then exhale, tuck your chin. Now just looking down, really tuck the chin. And then you can slowly lower. Keep the chin in. As you lower down, and then you can release the arms to the side. Let the head roll from side to side. And then roll all the way over to your left, and you lift the chin and head off the floor. Well, obviously your chin will come with your head, and you're going to be on that left ear, and you press your opposite right shoulder down. So you're going to start taking that right side of your neck as your shoulders are dropped back. And if you don't feel stressed, see if you can pin and turn a little bit more. I don't know if you ever get tested, you know, for your range of motion. Um, apparently, my neck is hypermobile. And I think it's from yoga because I can kind of, when they test me, they think, they say I'm like the exorcist. So <laughs> not to freak you out or anything, but you may really increase your range and your tightness on one side will might release a lot because of that increased range. That's what I've noticed. And then you come to the other side, you really lift the head, really turn, then place that ear down. Drop the opposite left shoulder. Stay with your breathing. Breath. further if you need to turn a bit more to place. And then you're coming on back and press the shoulder blades under, way under, and do a lift of the chin and look up so you're on the back top corner of the head and the shoulders press back. It's like a lazy fish. Now point the toes and pull, sorry, pull the toes back rather and reach the heels out. Really open over there. And then relax the feet. Draw the chin in. Take the hands behind the head, lifting. And then tuck the chin, take an in-breath. Exhale and tuck. And stay with your breathe. Steady breath. And now turn and look to your left, tucking the chin in. Look over and down, down, really tuck in, pull the head up. Come on back, rotate over to the right, get the chin tucked, and breath, and breath, really tuck. Back to your center, and then you can let your head rest and come all the way down. Take the bend of the knees again, take the soles of the feet together and let the knees come apart. The tailbone is dropping. Front body is open. And then next I invite you to do a side stretch or stay here. See what feels good. If you want to just let go, let go. The side stretch, the hands come back again behind the head. Interlace the fingers. Bend over to your left and press the right elbow back as you breathe in and out through the nose. Steady breath. 
Steady breath. Beautiful. And then you can breathe in. Come on back. Bend over to your right. Press your left elbow back. Breathe in and out through the nose. Keep that left elbow pressing back. Opening that left waist. Deep breath. Good. Let's come on over to the left again or rest. Bend over to the left. Press the right elbow back. Breathe. Open that right side. I've got the shoulder blades under. So you're pasting the arms back as you open through the waist. One more deep breath. Excellent. And then you can breathe in. Come on back again. Over to the right. Press that left elbow back. Beautiful breathing. Chest is open. Steady breath. Okay, great. Now you can come on back to the center. Once again, take an in-breath. Exhale, tuck the chin and look down. So, you want to have the chin really in. You're mushing and making a triple chin. And then you can slowly lower as you keep the chin tucked in. Lower all the way down. Relax the arms to the side and then just feel the wonderful effects. Let your legs come over the bolster again. Let go and release. Feel all the restorative juices of the blood flow coming in and recreating an inner order. Just let go. Take a minute to simply breathe. And then again, bend your knees. Pull both knees up into the body wide. And bending the elbows to the outside as you pull in. Stay with your breathing. Pull in a little more if you can. And then you can release and let the heels down. Great. Relax the arms to the side. Now you can just take your left foot right in front of the knee, then take the right knee to wrap on top. Lift the legs up again. Hold on either behind the knees or in front, which is a little braver, that's a little stronger. Stretch, and then you're going to pull the legs in, upper body stays down. Now the other thing I'm noticing is, um, one thing that I want to mention that I do intuitively is um, you can let your feet down, is I'll just pull the hairline up, like I'll pull so that the back of my neck is really long. And then when I put my head down, I've got the longest neck. So I can actually feel the roots of the back of the nape of the neck of the hair pulling up. It's just kind of a way that you keep your neck tethered up. It feels great. Yeah, rubber really holds your hair. <laughs> and now you just pull the legs in as the elbows bend and you breathe in and out through the nose. And then do a little rock from side to side. Take your time. And if you find a spot that feels really good, like over to my left, I'm loving that spot. Then stay there and pull in. Or continue the rock. 
Get the legs drawing in. Great. And then just pull into the middle, nice and snug again. And then you can undo the legs. Now let the feet on, let that left foot onto the bolster again. Rest the arms to the side, palms up. Undo the right leg. Then just be there for a moment. Letting yourself go. Good. Now take the right foot so that it's even with your right hip. So right knee, right hip are the same. Ankle is nodding closer. Then you take the left knee on top. Either grab behind the legs or in front. Pull the legs in. Get a really good squishing through the lower core. This is very good for the uh, uh, descending colon, so very good for digestion. And just a little note, when I was pregnant, um, my doctor said, so this would have been 32 years ago, yeah, my doctor said, um, you know, you may get, um, what's it called? Uh, so you don't even know what I mean. I always forget. Um, constipated. Oh, isn't that a lovely word to bring up right now? Um, and I, and I, I said to him, you know, just tell me exactly what that means. Like, is that for a day or an afternoon or a morning? <laughs> and he said to me, forget it. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> So any of the bends like this <laughs> gives you the bends. And you'll find that you have a fantastic colon. That's lovely. So bending um, is really good. Twisting is very good for the colon. And uh, then this is the descending colon because it's on your left side. And uh, you do your right side first, that's why. And you ascend and then you descend and then everything's ascending and descending. <laughs> And just pull in a little more if you can. And then come into a potential movement side to side, rocking into a place that needs to open. Take a few more breaths. And then just pull into your middle, pull in really snug again. And then release the legs. Uncross and lengthen the legs. Relax over the bolster. Take one more minute. Go right into your breathing and into silence. Great. Okay, let's change this to open up through the front of the body. We've opened up the low back. You can gently roll over to any side and gently drop to seat position. Now, the next moment is to come into a, a wonderful opening through the ribcage. So I can just imagine Amy is getting all excited. And we're going to come right into a nice opening. Uh, coming on to, oh good, Linda, welcome. We're going to come right into your roll back. Now, if you can um, just get the low back right up to the bolster, and then let the arms come to the side, and then soles the feet together, let the knees fall to the outside. Now, press the shoulder blades back and under so you get that wonderful opening through the rib cage. And as you breathe in, 
I welcome you to slightly tighten the abdominal wall. So a squeeze up and down like a Pillsbury dough pulp but rolling all the way up so that you can create some compression in the back of it. So you're not quite laying the belly inflate up, but you're keeping it tugged in a bit. And the arms are resting. And as you breathe in and out through the nose, you draw the breath down low. So a fantastic expansion in your front body. And actually, what I meant to say was there's not expansion in through the abdominal wall, but it brings an expansion into the back of the body a bit more, a bit more stretch into the low back by holding the abdominal wall in. That gives you the expansion in your back. And as you're lying there, let the mind rest on your breath and feel like the breath is like a, a, a leaf on top of the water. And as it is connected with the rhythm and the tide and the wash of the waves, or if it's on a pond, just the ripples, the rise and fall. Feel how now, as you let your abdominal wall go, you let it respond to the waves of the breath. Notice if you want to change the position of the arms. If you want to take them up higher, like so. If you want to take them over the bolster or out like a V, so you're opening through the shoulder and the chest, anything that feels right. Take the arms down a little lower if they're high, please. Just about shoulder height or a tiny bit higher. So release the ribs a bit. And just a note about the legs. If you need to change the position, you might take the knees to the ceiling and press the feet in the floor. Or you might take the legs straight out to open through the backs of the knees. Whatever position you're in, make sure you can let go. The most uh, challenging, so to speak, is to have the feet together and the knees rolled in. As you stay with your breathing, feel the front, the heart area open and expand. In that area, this is actually a very real effect on your heart rate. When you have the, the rib cage open like this, you've got a bigger stretch in the diaphragm, more room for the breath to be fuller, which will lower your breath rate, 
which will lower your heart rate. So this is a really good pose to lie in. I, I lie like this whenever I can. Everybody knows that I like to lie back and open my neck <laughs> and, uh, and, and do it at any time. So this is a really good counter stretch to the rounded shoulderness you get. Keep your breathing steady. Good. And just one more note. It's important to do this pose or to do any kind of cobra because many people's posture is getting a little worse with all the extra computer time and home time and sitting and you know just less out and about maybe. So just please make sure that you keep the chin back when you're sitting at the computer and that you keep it at a good eye level so you're not looking down. End of note. And keep on breathing and opening. Keep on feeling your body rest back. And I will come right into our next, uh, our next poetry reading. Tonight I'm going to read from Rumi, who is officially it's so, delightful. it's so delightful to say this. He is the most uh, popular poet in the world. How about that? Now, he is a Sufi. And to describe Sufism in one statement, it's to be love. It's to be love. They're all about love. That everything is connected. That um, pure mener energy of the mind is love or consciousness. And um, he had so many wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ways of understanding love, including this one, entitled Buoyancy. Love has taken away my practices and filled me with poetry. I tried to keep quietly repeating, no strength but yours, but I couldn't. I had to clap and sing. I used to be respectable and chaste and stable. But who can stand in this strong wind and remember those things? A mountain keeps an echo deep inside itself. That's how I hold your voice. I am scrap wood thrown in your fire and quickly reduced to smoke. To praise is to praise how one surrenders to the emptiness. To praise the sun is to praise your own eyes. Praise the ocean, what we say, a little ship. So the sea journey goes on, and who knows where? Just to be held by the ocean is the best luck we could have. It's a total waking up. Why should we grieve that we've been sleeping? It doesn't matter how long we've been unconscious. We're groggy, but let the guilt go. Feel the motions of tenderness around you, the buoyancy. Rumi. We gotta love that guy. Mm. This poem, also about being a lover, is entitled, The Sunrise Ruby. In the early morning hour, just before dawn, lover and beloved wake and take a drink of water. She asks, do you love me or yourself more? Really, truly, the absolute truth, he says. There's nothing left of me. I'm like a ruby held up to the sunrise. Is it still a stone or a world made of redness? It has no resistance to sunlight. Good answer. The ruby and the sunrise are one. Be courageous and discipline yourself. 
completely become hearing and ear, and wear the sun ruby as an earring. Work, keep digging your well. Don't think about getting off from work. Water is there somewhere. Submit to a daily practice. Your loyalty to that is a ring on the door. Keep knocking. And the joy inside will eventually open a window and look out to see who's there. Gotta love that guy. Where were we? Let's find any best next position that can open in through the neck. So I would like you to either stay in this position because you know it's enough and you're loving it, or you can gently roll to your right side and then you can take the bolster. And let's come all the way to bolster. This is a very strong stretch. And this is the strongest version, is to have the tailbone on the floor, have the soles of the feet together, the arms on the other side. So the shoulder blades will be at the top and then to let your upper body come back. Now I've got the top back corner of the head. So if my head was a blockhead, which some people have said, um, then you'll be right on the back corner and you just let the arms come over. The arms are soft, the palms turned up, fingers naturally curl. Please make sure there's no pressure on the tailbone. If there is, it might be the hips. So what you can do is you can take your knees to the ceiling, have your feet naturally apart like this, and you can let the feet just rest on the floor. You go right into your breath. Keep staying with your breath. Let it go. And that would be my cue to take us right back into another wonderful reading. Another reader that uh, you may love to listen to is Maria Pacoma. And she does, once a year, she does an event called Universe in Verse. And it is an infamously um, incredible collage of poets and singers and writers and researchers and philosophers. And she puts them all together in a fantastic newsletter. And it's called Brain Pickings. And often I find what I love to read in there, or I find out something that I want to read in there. And although she doesn't quote Rumi as much as others, this is a poem for Rumi that is quoted by many, many, many writers to help us understand how to live. This poem is entitled The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep through your house, empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from above. The guest house. I'd just like to return to the poem about the ruby and the lovers and just a little bit of an excerpt from the beginning of that chapter, which is entitled Being a Lover. 
Being a lover is close to being a worker. When the ruby becomes the sunrise, its transparency changes to a daily discipline. There's a story about a Sufi who rips his robe and gives it the name Faraji, which means ripped open or happiness or one who brings the joy of being opened. It comes from the stem Faraj, which also refers to the genitals, male and female. The Sufi's teacher sees the purity of the name and the action, while others notice only his ragged appearance. Peace and compassion come as coverings, are thrown open, and the streaming beauty of emotion flows through the lover worker. The work is to be a good host at the Caravanasere. I don't know what that means. Okay, I went too far. So just let your whole body continue to rest back. And in your position, wherever you are, if you're in the first position with the bolster long ways, then everybody lift the tailbone up off the floor by pressing the feet down, feet are naturally apart, and scoop the tailbone away as you let go. Stay long through your spine. Good, and one more breath. Keep pressing into the feet to send the tailbone away. And then gently lower. Good, and come again, lifting the tailbone up. Breathing, keep the knees reaching to the ceiling so they don't sway apart. And then slowly lower again. Now you can gently roll to your right side. And we'll take the bolster right underneath your knees and you can let your whole body rest back. So letting go, feel the weight of the body sink into the floor. Just notice what it's like to feel heavy. Feel any weight that you might have entered with whether it's emotional, mental, or physical. Just feel it melt into the floor as you continue to let go. This has been a beautiful day. And see if you can pull some of that fantastic energy in on this summer day that just reminds us of how full and beautiful and bright the world is. And as you rest in Shavasana, I will read one more poem from Rumi. Quietness. Inside this new love, die. Your way begins on the other side. Become the sky. Take an ax to the prison wall. Escape. Walk out like someone is suddenly born into color. Do it now. You're covered with thick cloud. Slide out the other side. Die. And be quiet. Quietness is the surest sign that you've died. Your old life was frantic running from silence. The speechless full moon comes out now. Quietness. Okay, 
take a few more minutes to let go. Feeling the rhythms of the breath moving through. Notice that the back of the body is supported entirely. And notice if there's any part of the body that can soften back into that support. Continue to feel the breath moving through the body. Soft, surrendered into the floor. And just like in the roomy poet, the poetry about quietness die, let your body return to the earth in Shalasana, leaving just the energy body to allow you to feel the body soft and open and for it to be in its full ability of being alive. To now, with awareness on your breathing, take in a deeper breath. Completely exhale. And then you can bend your knees, bring your feet to the bolster. Hold on behind the knees. Pull the legs in wide. Reach down to the low legs of the feet and draw the legs into happy baby. Bend the knees of the outside. Get the low back pressing strongly into the floor. Good. 
Stay with your breath. And then come into a lovely rock side to side. A little bit more. A little more. And then again, let your feet jog. Gently roll to your right side. Lie in fetal position. Take the right arm under her pillow. Completely let go for a moment. Take in a nice full breath again. Feel how tender you feel. And then gently draw right up to seated position. Take a moment to settle. Know that this ability to be in this experience, if you're in a really super relaxed place, is possible. And when you do get out of it, if you could please do anything you can to help your body to come back into this inner order. And we'll bring our hands together and to bow and namaste. Namaste. So have a wonderful sleep tonight, you guys. And I will see you, my God, I'm going to see you 